Okay, hi. So I wanted to share a little bit more about PCOS. Um, I feel like I talk about PCOS pretty often, but there's always new research coming out, new things to share. So I figured I would fill you in on some, some new things, some things that are not new, uh, but that I might just not have shared before. Sometimes I assume if you have PCOS, you know certain things um, about the condition, but I've been hearing more and more that um, women actually are not as uh, informed by their doctors as I think they should be. So um, I'm going to take it on. <laughs> if you know some of this, then it will just be redundant. Um, you're obviously living with the, with the condition. So, um, you know, I'd love to actually hear back about your experience of things, what resonates, what doesn't. Uh, I am going to read from my notes just because I really want to make sure I don't forget anything. Um, so yeah, so PCOS is often, um, it's interesting. They used to think, or they used to like think it was, um, related to higher incidences of metabolic condition and insulin resistance, but now it's being thought of more as a metabolic condition in and of itself um, that is contributing to insulin resistance. Some people think that insulin resistance is the cause of it, and then the high insulin then produces more um, androgens. Some people think the opposite, that it's actually the higher androgens that is in producing more insulin resistance. So but what we do know is that it is a metabolic conditions, condition, um, which is characterized by some or all of these factors. Um, like I said, insulin resistance, amenorrhea, which means no period, oligomenorrhea, which is actually no ovulation um, or very like um, minimal ovulation. Basically, like your ovaries kind of like get shut down. Um, they get really stagnant. In Chinese medicine, we see it as really blocked up by like a phlegm dampness that actually just um, like freezes it almost. It just like clogs it all up so that we just can't ovulate. Um, acne, high LHFSH ratio, um, cysts on ovaries. They're often like um, ovaries can actually be, be five times as big as a regular um, non-PCOS ovary. And when you actually cut into it, um, you actually see it's like filled with like shiny pearls almost, which are like your, your follicles. You have too many follicles. Um, and all of those follicles are then excreting um, hormones. So um, often there's infertility. Often there's hirsutism, which is like hair on your face or chest. Um, you also, because of the high androgen levels, which androgens are like male, um, hormones or more associated, we have, we have them naturally. It's just a higher, um, prevalence of a higher ratio of the more male, uh, factor hormones. So even though they're natural for us to have, um, in the higher ratio, they end up giving us more like, uh, male type syndromes. Like we might actually male pattern baldness, um, high AMH levels. AMH is actually showing how many follicles you have in your ovaries. So a lot of women are often panicking because they have really low AMH, which means they don't have enough follicles to get pregnant, but high AMH levels actually shows that you have too many follicles. Um, there's often weight gain. Um, and then a follicular genesis disorder, which is actually like your, your follicles, because there are so many, you're not actually um, having enough um, kind of energy to build that one up you need to ovulate. So um, it's important to note that PCOS is actually not like I study T TCM, often classical uh, TCM, and this, which is traditional Chinese medicine. And it's important to note that um, this is not... Um, this was not something that was even recognized in like the ancient texts. Like the, it's a very modern condition. Um, I think it has a lot to do with our, our lifestyle, including our dietary factors, which I'll talk about. Also our stress levels are pretty constant stress levels. I think when we used to have stressed, it was more in like bursts. Um, and now we have this more like sustained stress. So it said that up to 50%, 50% of teenage girls are now being diagnosed in, in the U.S. with PCOS. Um, often they're put on the birth control pill, which actually worsens uh, PCOS, the severity of PCOS, and can actually contribute to a new case of PCOS in a woman that never had it before. So definitely not the, 
the correct treatment. I think they're given it because it like regulates a period, even though that's absolutely not what it's doing. It's kind of forcing a bleed, but it's actually not a period. It's just a shedding of the uterine lining, which has nothing to do with menstruation or, you know, menstruation is due to ovulation. So anyway, um, I'm trying not to like talk too much about each topic, but just to kind of give you an overview. So yeah, like I said, the really large ovaries, um, I talked about hyperinsulinemia, um, and that actually when you have too much ins insulin, it can actually stimulate the androgens. Um, it's thought to be, like I said, a lifestyle factor is contributing to it, plus potentially um, genetic predisposition. predisposition. There was actually, um, I think it was called like the woman of w Willendorf, um, where they did some some studies that show that um, probably in the times of famine, like 25,000 years ago, women with this genetic predisposition to hold on to more uh, fat on their bodies, uh, which is one of the you know side effects or uh, outcomes of PCOS, they actually were more resistant to famine. So and and to like continuing on the species because when um, non PCOS women lose weight, often they become infertile. You know, you see women who become anorexic and they <clears throat> struggle, they lose their period and they um, become infertile. Often women who have PCOS, who lose weight, maybe during times of famine, they actually will then get their period and be more fertile. So there is some kind of like maybe a genetic component, sorry, genetic component proponent uh, that this is actually like supportive to the species in that way. Uh, but certainly in these times where, knock on wood, there are not really that types of famine. I think in some ways there's like nutrition famines, which I'll talk about. Um, we're not actually having like a, a amount of food famine, just like a quality of food famine. Um, so as far as insulin resistance, I don't want to go too much into like what that looks like or what the kind of patho mechanisms are. But like a regular cell might have 20,000 receptor sites for insulin. So the cell can actually absorb an insulin and use it. Um, insulin resistant cells, which is what most women with PCOS have, only have 5,000 receptors on it. So it can only take in so much insulin and then the rest kind of floats around in the bloodstream. And so there's also more glucose in the blood. Um, like I said, worsened by the birth control pill kind of trying to move fast because I have a lot I want to cover and I don't want to take up too much time, but I'm going to slow down a little bit. Um, this part is really in interesting. If there's actually just one tidbit you take from this, it would be this, that um, it's been found that up to 85% of women with PCOS have low serum concentration or low levels in their blood of vitamin D. So Often there's a pretty significant vitamin D deficiency. So I would say if you have PCOS, if you have some of the symptoms of PCOS, um, definitely take PC, um, vitamin D. I recommend vitamin um, D3. And it needs to be taken with magnesium in order to be used properly. So um, vitamin D for sure. I actually take like 10,000 IU a day. Um, not every day, but I think we're all like really pretty significantly depleted in vitamin D. So a lot of vitamin D is okay. Often they'll say like 1000 IU a day. And I think that's not even close to enough, especially with um, if you have PCOS. So vitamin D, important. Stress can absolutely worsen um, PCOS. So like a lot of women will be fine, but then they'll have a really high stress situation or they'll be like working 14 hour days and they'll just like develop PCOS. Um, I, I think this is because of our cortisol levels are kind of impacting all of our other levels, um, impacting our insulin resistance, impacting our glucose levels. So really doing things to manage stress is important. Um, as far as like PCOS and weight, this is a tricky thing to talk about because um, I always want to tell you the facts, you know, and also be aware of like uh, the tendency of our culture to body shame. And then there's the whole body positivity movement. And this isn't about like body love. Like I do believe you can love and should love yourself and your body at any weight. And the reality is that weight gain worsens severity of PCOS. It's just the reality of the situation. Um, in Chinese medicine, we see it as like phlegm damp accumulation. There's um, more inflammation, uh, 
it's just the reality. And it's also been shown that, um, you know, it's not like you need to be strict or severe with yourself because even five to 10% body weight loss can kind of reverse the impact of PCOS. So, um, there's a fly. So yeah, like even a five pound weight gain can, um, worsen the severity of PCOS, but losing five to 10% of body weight can help. Um, and it can actually improve pregnancy rates in PCOS. So that's important to note. Um, I'll talk a little bit more towards the end about more like dietary changes and things. Um, but also the apple shape um, is more problematic for PCOS. We find PCOS in women with um, an apple shaped body. It has more to do with like visceral fat, which is a more metabol metabolically active fat that's around our organs um, in the midsection, as opposed to like a pear shape where we might have like button thigh fat, but it's more subcutaneous fat. It's not impacting our organs as much. It's not, um, it's not as metabolically active. So yeah, so we know that PCOS can actually like diminish our ovarian function. It can actually kind of, like I said, pause our ovaries from functioning. It just like congeals them. Um, but we've also found that there's some inflammatory proteins in the lining of the uterus, which can actually contribute to a more difficult time implanting. So even if you do ovulate and your um, it fertilizes, it might have a more difficult time implanting, which is why we really focus on reducing inflammation, reducing phlegm, reducing dampness. Um, I would definitely recommend like actually getting in there with the womb massage, with the castor oil to kind of work out some of that um, dampness. There are more studies showing that Chinese herbs actually do really support um, <clears throat> support PCOS, support clearing of some of that phlegm dampness. Um, unfortunately, with PCOS, things do take more time. So um, the studies show people doing um, herbs and acupuncture regularly for like three to six months, really regularly, often because phlegm and damp is like congealing, it's sticky, is often not like a quick fix. Like it can take a lot of time, a lot of consistency to move through that, which is why I recommend doing it for a long time. Um, a lot of people ask about metformin. Um, it actually is, uh, can be supportive for women with PCOS, but I think it was found that it actually um, has been so shown to potentially reduce insulin resistance, but not necessarily impact pregnancy rates. Um, there's something that I prefer has fewer side effects. It's called dihydro dihydroberberine. Um, I could post links to it, but it's in our full script. Um, the vitamin D and magnesium is also available in our full script. It's like an herbal alternative to metformin. Uh, but even if you're not trying to get pregnant, it is important to treat your PCOS, to do whatever you can to reduce it because 40% um, of women with PCOS will ultimately go on to develop diabetes, type 2 diabetes. Um, and there's also seven times higher risk factor of heart disease um, and high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease. So it's really important to just do whatever you can to, to reduce that. And there are things you could do. Um, our fertile moon tea and detox tea, those are our most like liver clearing to kind of like process the, the excess uh, phlegm and damp and process the hormones that are in our PCOS bundle. I definitely recommend a lot of womb massage to really like actually physically try to get that that gunk as I see it kind of moving. Um, the dihydroberberine, um, the definitely vitamin D, uh, definitely magnesium. Um, they also show that women that have PCOS have higher instances, incidences of mental health issues, anxiety, and depression um, that might be related to the, the low vitamin D. Um, so the vitamin D is especially important. That's like one thing, be sure you're doing. Um, a lot of women ask about Clomid when it comes to PCOS. Um, it can be supportive, Clomid, um, except not if you tend to have a really high BMI, body mass index, um, or high androgens, because androgens tend to be more hot and Clomid is hot. Um, and so they can actually consume your yin and your fluids. Uh, we want to drain fluid without actually burning up your yin, which we need for healthy follicles. So for some women, Clomid could just be too hot and too yin consuming. Um, 
it's also important to note um, regarding the metformin, which is why, especially for you guys who are also trying to get pregnant, I highly um, recommend against metformin. It's a, it's a category C um, medication, which means that it's incredibly damaging to pregnancy. Um, category C's are like, you can't be pregnant while on it at all. And it needs to be out of your system. And the dihydrobarbarine is not like that. So wanted to share that. Um, as far as PCOS, IVF is often not a great option because of the higher risk of hyperstimulation. You already have so many follicles. Um, so there can be a higher risk of, um, overstimulation, overstimulation, but you know, some women are successful with it. Um, oh, back to Clomid. If you are going to do Clomid, you actually can uh, work with herbs and Clomid at the same time. Um, but it's also recommended to work for or work with herbs for a few weeks or even a month before you start Clomid. That actually had a higher success rate of pregnancy than if you just with work with um, Clomid alone. Clomid with herbs, it actually worked best if you had herbs before and leading up to, and then also with Clomid lifestyle. So yeah. Like I said, um, you know, it's a tricky time to talk about weight. Uh, it's, um, but, you know, I appreciate giving you guys the facts. I know that you guys appreciate hearing the facts. So that's just the reality is that weight gain does contribute to PCOS and like even a little bit of weight loss makes a big difference. So I do recommend trying to get up to 10,000 steps a day. Um, I don't even do that, but... <laughs> That's what's recommended. I try. Um, I need to put like a step counter or something on my phone. I don't have one. I don't wear a watch like that, but um, I'm trying. It just makes a big difference for overall health. Um, they've actually found that even a 10 minute walk after each meal um, is better for your metabolic health than like a 30 minute walk once a day. So you might want to do what we call like micro um, microdosing exercises. I, I think JJ version maybe coined that, but microdosing exercise where you're like, you know, getting up every hour and doing 10 squats or after each meal, do a 10 minute walk. It doesn't have to be intense. Um, but exercising is crucial. Uh, weightlifting especially can build muscle. It builds muscle more than obviously just like walking and the muscle then can prevent, um, the cardiovascular situation, muscle, uh, more muscle can reduce insulin resistance. Um, and also, um, in increasing protein in your diet is incredibly important. So, um, this is also something that I'm trying to do. That's crazy, but like a hundred grams of protein a day, uh, would be ideal, which is really hard to do. That's like four eggs is like 25 grams, um, usually like a, a scoop of protein powder is like 25 grams. So that's 50, um, you know, steak, chicken, um, to really do good quality, not too high fat, ideally protein, but good quality protein, um, with some, you know, vegetables and healthy fats, um, because of the insulin resistance, it's really important to reduce things that turn to sugar. Um, so you know, unfortunately, like refined grains and flours are just really hard on the body. So stick with whole grains. If you can avoid grains, that might actually even be better specifically for women with PCOS. Um, but like things like sweet potatoes are okay, better than white potatoes. I actually talk about this in my food guide, so I don't want to go into it too much. And I also talk about intermittent fasting, which, um, the way that a lot of people think about it, which is like the same every day, that's actually really terrible for women. So um, it's much better to do it uh, according to your cycle. Now I understand you might not be having a cycle because you have PCOS. Um, so, you know, you can look at the kind of more um, regular type intermittent fasting. Um, I find like a few days a week, I'll just stop eating at 4.30. And that has really made a big difference in my feeling of inflammation in my body. Um, it's actually much healthier, I will say, if you're going to do intermittent, intermittent fasting to actually do it in the evening, as opposed to like trying to go until 3 PM until, until you eat in the morning, you know, it's much better for our bodies. Our stomach channel turns on in the morning. So we're actually digesting better in the morning. Uh, so I actually do recommend eating in the morning, but stopping eating or having your smallest meal in the evening. Um, 
I will say too that um, it is harder for PCOS women to to lose weight um, because glucose, which is more glucose in the bloodstream, is actually converted to fat. Um, there tends to be higher ghrelin levels, which has to do with um, hunger signals. And there's also um, leptin resistance, which has to do with satiety. So often you need to eat more in order to feel satiated. Also, if that wasn't enough, um, <laughs> the high androgen levels tend to um, boost carb cravings. So there's more hunger, less satiety, more cravings for carbs. So it's really, really important, like even if you're craving carbs to like eat protein first. So that's like the number one rule in PCOS eating is like eat your protein first and then like eat a good amount of protein and then see what you're hungry for. Um, yeah, like I said, it often takes like a jump start to the ovaries because our ovaries are like packed with phlegm. So um, the jump start is is important, which... Like I said, there's the vitamin D, the magnesium, the PCOS uh, bundle herbs, <clears throat> the um, womb warming massage or the womb, whatever, either one of the massages, but definitely the castor oil, um, the dihydroberberine. Um, and then a lot of you have been asking about Ozempic type things, uh, the GLP-1 agonists. Um, I have really, I don't like the idea of Ozempic. <laughs> um, I just, um, I'm wary about things that are like marketed specifically for weight loss. And I find that it's not actually looking at, um, how people are eating, um, what the condition is. I think it's, it's okay in, in some specific instances. Um, but I think the way that it's like, everyone is on Ozempic that I find that to be really dangerous actually. Um, are concerning to me, um, just that people aren't properly being properly informed about the side effects. Um, and there are side effects. Uh, the Ozempic dose, I think actually peptides can be really healthy, um, but the dosage of Ozempic is much higher um, than like the therapeutic dose for peptides. It's like the, I don't know the difference, but um, it's like a significantly higher dose. And um, and there's less tracking. So people are getting side effects like gastric um issues with gastric emptying. Um, I've heard of people with having like a lot of pain. There's also that um, Ozempic, really anytime you lose weight quickly, you're also losing um, muscle mass, which is incredibly important for metabolic metabolic health, um, especially for women as we age, bone density. So um, while I don't recommend Ozempic, I'm always trying to kind of like look for alternatives. And I actually found one that I'm going to tell you about, but it's kind of with like the caveat that I haven't um, tried it. It's really new. Um, it is plant-based. So that always makes me feel a little bit better. And I like the studies that are being done on it. Um, it's called Calo Curb and it's actually a hops extract. Um, so I can tell you what it says it does. Um, so they're, they're doing some Clinical study on it shows to reduce appetite by 80% and reduce reduce caloric intake by 18%. <clears throat> it's got amarsate, amarsate in it, which is an extract from hops. Um, and it stimulates taste buds in the gut to release hormones, which send a natural fullness signal to the brain to help manage appetite. Um, I'm sharing you about this to look at yourself and to explore. Um which is like, I'm just telling you about, I'm not actually recommending it yet, but because I've been getting a lot of questions about the Ozempic, um, I wanted to give you this option instead. It's called Calo Curb. I can link to it. It's also available on our full script. Um, and I would actually love to, to hear back from you. Like if you, it's new, um, it, it seems like pretty safe to me. Like my sense of it is that it's, it's feels safer than some of the other things I've seen in that category. So um, I know a lot of you are asking and looking for that. So yeah, Calo Curb will link to it. Um, and the reason that I am sharing anything is because of the fact that it actually is important if you have PCOS and you're of the higher, um, higher BMI, higher waist to hip ratio, like that is actually, um, you know, not good for you. The higher instances of incidences of um cardiovascular disease and diabetes, you know, so, um, that's what I have. I like rushed through that because I have something else to sign on to in 10 minutes. So I wanted to make sure I got it all out. So sorry, I was stumbling a little bit, but hopefully that was, uh, easily too easy to absorb. 
and um, here to answer any questions you might have. And hopefully that's helpful. Okay, bye.